is understood, and scholar after scholar understands this and says that the, the gospel in the first century, if you would have said to somebody, what the gospel, what's the gospel? And of course, the good news. What is the gospel? What is the good news? They would have said that Caesar is Lord. Of course that's the good news. Of course that's the gospel. It's the Pax Romana, the peace that Rome brings. Caesar is Lord. We have peace in our society. Hail to Caesar. Praise Caesar. That's the gospel. The ruler is the emperor. That was the good. That's what that first century mindset meant. If you talk, stop to somebody on the street and ask them. That was supposed to be the good news. But early believers understood things differently. When Jesus came on the scene, early believers understood, and some at great peril, but even if they didn't proclaim it out in the streets, they did in their gathering. Caesar is not Lord. Jesus is Lord. Sometimes in the secrecy of their gatherings, they're being persecuted. The good news, the gospel, is that Jesus is Lord, not Caesar, but Jesus. The Roman emperor thought he was in charge, but he was not. Jesus is in charge. And so they understood the gospel again, not that Caesar's in charge, but that Jesus is, and that's a paradigm shift. And that continues to be a paradigm shift for us today as well. Even for those of us who have walked with the Lord for quite some time, because you see this has implications for us. Just as it had implications for them. For us, this means Joe Biden is not Lord. Jesus is Lord. Amen. 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 Okay, well, hold your because it means something else, too. It also means Donald Trump is not Lord. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Hold on, because it also means Vladimir Putin is not Lord. Jesus is Lord. It also means that the Ayatollah in Iran is not Lord. Jesus is Lord. It means Xi Jinping of China is not Lord. Jesus is Lord. That has implications for us. <laughs> Your boss is not Lord. China is not Lord. Your oppressor is not Lord. Your ex is not Lord. Your mom and dad is not Lord. Here it is, sports fans. I want to hold your hands on this one. <laughs> you are not Lord. I am not Lord. Only Jesus is Lord. Because Jesus was bought by creation. That's what he did on the cross. Because he bound up the strong man, he came into enemy territory. He bound up the strong man because all authority has been given to him on heaven and earth. He can offer us forgiveness of our sins. And life with him forever. He redeemed creation. He bought that creation, which we had forfeited through our sin to Satan and his bunch. And he bought that creation at a very high cost. The ransom payment for his creation, the ransom payment for creation's release as they were being held hostage, including the opportunity of forgiveness that we have, was high. It was his blood. It wasn't as kidnappers do today and ask for a million dollars on a plane to Cuba. The cost was far higher. It was the blood of the Lamb. And so he has redeemed creation. He has bought it back. He has paid the ransom. We are no longer being held hostage to sin, death, and Satan. We have been freed because of the kingdom. The gospel is so much bigger than just us. He came to inaugurate or re-inaugurate his kingdom. But there was a cost. His life. He offers us citizenship in heaven. That's truly good news. But there's a price to us as well. Not only to our Lord. In the scripture that we read today, verse 34 reads, Then he called the crowd. Interesting, he's speaking to his disciples. The crowds are hanging around. But then to the crowds he goes, Psh! You know what I just do. Then he called the crowd along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel, for the kingdom, will save it. You know, um, I, I, I wear a cross. Uh, sometimes around my neck, and sometimes I hold on when I pray, and those kind of things. It's 
just symbolic to me. The people of this day who would have heard this never would have done that. It would be like walking around with a syringe and a lethal injection or having an electric chair hanging from your head. Hey, look at my electric chair here. It means death. Why would we embrace death? No. You want to run from the cross. Not to it. But Jesus said, if you want to be mine. And he's the one who set us free. He's the one who brought his kingdom. If we want to be part of his kingdom, this is our call. Not me, but thee. Less of me, more of you, all of you. None of me, as J.B. would say. But it's interesting, too, that Jesus isn't one of those leaders that says, go. I mean, he does say go, but it's follow me. He's in front. He's leading the charge. So I, I, I want to juxt, juxtapose a couple of different scriptures uh, uh, from today. I mean, uh, uh, verses. Uh, mm -hmm. Verse 31 and then verse 34 and 35. So instead of the stuff in the middle kind of getting in the way, let's, let, let, let's kind of read those together. I'm going to read 31 and then 34 and 35. He, that's Jesus, began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He even said he spoke plainly about this. Now move to 34. Then he crawled the crowd along with him to his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. Jesus doesn't ask us to do anything that he didn't already do. He leads from the front. He says, follow me, not go over there. Follow me. To put it another way, Jesus in, 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 in other parts of the gospel uh, uh, says words like this. A student is not above his teacher. A servant is not above his master. If this was the faith of the servant, if this was the faith of the teacher, then it's going to be... Uh, I mean, uh, of the master or the teacher, then this is going to be the fate of the, of the student and the servant. And I have to follow in his way. Peter, of course, does what we do when we hear this. You know, here on Sunday, you know, here on Sunday we're worshiping, it sounds great. It's like, yeah! Let me talk to you Tuesday afternoon and see how these words sound after you're grumbling about this, that, or the other. <laughs> That's where the rubber hits the road. That's where the shoe leather comes in. Peter, of course, does what we do, too, when we hear this stuff. But Jesus says that when we do anything other than pick up our cross and follow him, deny ourselves, we are not being influenced by the kingdom. Remember this battle that we talked about at the beginning of the month? This unseen kind of battle? But we are not being influenced by the kingdom. But rather, we're acting worldly. Biblically, by definition, acting worldly is being influenced by the powers and principalities by Satan. So when we don't do this, we're being influenced by the dark. As John says it in one of his letters. You walk in the light, or you walk in the dark. <laughs> you can't walk in the light and the dark. <laughs> I mean, you can, just not at the same time. That would hurt. I'm not that flexible. You know, I try to be, but I'm not. How are we going to live? Jesus invites us to his lifestyle, this very lifestyle where we deny ourselves for the sake of the kingdom and for the sake of others. It's not just for us, it's for the sake of others as well, as well so that whosoever I believe. And you say, preacher, what are you talking about? Every time we choose bitterness over forgiveness, <coughs> we're being influenced by the powers of principalities, not by the kingdom. Every time we choose materialism over giving and being generous, we're being influenced by the powers and principalities. No, no we can't. we're not picking up our cross. Anytime we don't live sacrificially and we live just for pleasure, I just want to feel good. I just want. To... Wasn't that what being an American was like? Well, yeah. But are we citizens in the kingdom of heaven? Or we kind of have a dual thing going. But who's going to have the bigger voice? And I'm not saying you should make yourself uncomfortable. I'm not sell my couch and sit on the floor. I mean, do that if you want, but that's not really, you know, what's being done. I'm going to kneel on one knee when I watch TV. That's fine. Hey, it's a free country. But that's not what he's talking about. Giving up our will. Now, it's 
it's really going to get close to home. Every time we demand <coughs> our will, my way or the highway, Elvis and Sinatra sang the same song, I did it my way. That's an anathema to the king. Being influenced by the kingdom of darkness, not the kingdom of light. We are not called to demand our way. We are not called to demean others. We are not called to live in a root of bitterness. We are called to be healed. He came to set the captives free. But there's a paradox. We can only truly be free in kingdom perspective when we pick up our cross and deny ourselves and commit ourselves to Jesus. And not just for ourselves, but for the sake of others as well. We had a dentist, um, I guess I'll just say, we had a dentist at one of the churches that, well, he wasn't a member of our church, but uh, he came and talked to the men's group, the women's group, and, and, and I think the church. He was, he was a dentist in town, where we were. He, um, he left his practice because he felt the call of the Lord. He sold three young children. Now, I've never been to dentist. I didn't say at a Holiday Inn. <laughs> I haven't pretended. And I'm not, you know, but generally dentists live a pretty good, a pretty good standard of living. Let me just say that. A pretty good standard of living. He gave it all up. I'm not saying God's calling us to do that. I'm talking about him personally. He gave it all up. And he went down to South America to teach at a dental school there for free and to spread the gospel message of the kingdom of God through which we can have forgiveness of our sins and freedom from the power of sin, death, and Satan in our lives. And when he came to speak at our church, I'm sorry to tell you, <laughs> it was just a mess. And people, you know, of course he needs support. And $10 a month is support, $20, anything. Because it's, it's the community giving it. And we had people. We didn't give any money. Men's group, women's group, church, individuals. We had people standing up and saying, I don't believe in that kind of thing. And I'm going, you don't believe in what kind of thing? <laughs> Giving up $250,000 a year to go live and, and, and squalor and, 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 and teach other people for free and spread the gospel and drag your children and your wife? You don't believe in? What do you mean you don't believe in that? What are you talking about? It's my money, preacher. Of course, this is all voluntary. We've got to sweep our own porch before we sweep somebody else's. It's okay, we'll scrap a couple of rooms and maybe we can sweep ours and somebody. I don't know. So then you start mentioning sweeping our own front porch. Okay, well, let's do this in our own church and in our own. Oh, pro Every time we demand our own way, no darkness is influencing us. This Lent. Well, his mercies are new every day. <clears throat> the church has decided that there's a couple of seasons to really be penitent. So this Lent, this Lenten season, we have the opportunity to recalibrate, recalibrate ourselves. There may be something in us. <clears throat> it may be arrogance. Maybe pride. Maybe demanding our own way. Maybe trying to have control. And, and anything that it can be. And the Lord offers us an opportunity to recalibrate our life if we're off course. You know, he's on the GPS going, recalculating. Come on, let's get you back on track. Let's get you back on the path. He offers that to us. But it requires denying ourselves and picking up the cross. Are we willing to do that? Or are we going to double down on self? You know, self-righteousness, self-promotion, selfishness, self-centeredness, all the self-stuff. We're going to choose to allow the Lord to recalibrate us as we pick up our cross. Or are we going to do like Sinatra and Elvis and do it our way? The choice is before us, and He will let us choose. We can be influenced by the kingdom of darkness, 
the Lord gives his invitation. Let's pray. Precious Lord, what an anathema it would be if we choose to be influenced on a regular basis by your very enemies. Those who are so contrary to the gospel. Help us to surrender every aspect of our life to you. Our thought life, our wants, our control, our daily tasks, our mindset, our joys, our defeats. We put it all into your hands because you are the power and we are the clay. Help us, Holy Spirit. Come and help us to recount. Help us to pick up the cross and walk in your ways and not our own. And we ask this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.